As individuals, we are strong, but as a community, we are powerful. Tell me what you need, and I'll do what I can. Who are we? MSI! Who are we? MSI! Who are we? This is your host with the most, Alan Ruelas, and welcome to our third episode here with Get Going with MSI, where I interview brothers and feature their stories because our stories are valuable. With that being said, we have today the man of the hour by the name of Ariel Alvarez. Now, we are going to get right into it. We're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to actually be asking you the questions that are supposed to be anonymous, but not so anonymous for our brother here. Now. How are you doing? I'm doing well today, you know, just class and work, the usual schedule. <laughs> now ask me, now ask me. <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> well, thank you for asking. I'm doing good as well, but how are you really doing, Brother Ariel? You know, stressful. A couple of occurrences have happened during the past weeks, but there's nothing we could do but gather our things and move forward, you know? Period. Now, let me ask you the question that Brother Patoshi had mentioned, and he said, what's your leadership style like? My leadership style, I would describe it as I take initiative when needed, but of course I'd like to hear the thoughts of others. Um, throughout the times, my time here at Cal State Fullerton, I have put myself in other leadership positions, such as being the president and co-president of an organization here at Cal State Fullerton, you know, being part of a soccer team, as well as just like being part of like friends in general. Um, I feel like there are always moments where there would be leadership styles. And do I consider myself a leader? To an extent, most of the time I consider myself as a communicator. I want to make sure everybody's motives, everybody's thoughts are really publicized out there. So that's why I like to take into account everybody's thoughts, everybody's opinions, to try to manifest an output that everybody would be able to enjoy, one that everybody could approach and have the same great feelings towards. That sounds like the leader I saw while we were playing soccer. Uh, we're going to talk about that sooner rather than later. What is our team name? MSIFC. Well, I won't keep you all waiting because that's at the very, very, very end. But now with that being said, talk, about, talk to us about um, CPOG. CPOG, yeah. So CPOG stands for Community Embracing People of Color. It is an organization here at Cal State Fullerton that we've created. Um, it used to be known as the Brotherhood Collective, but during the pandemic, we went through a little bit of re reorganization, restructuring, and overall renaming. We aim to strive to provide people of color here at Cal State Fullerton an opportunity to find individuals that are just like them. We try to make a safe space for them. We have events that are catered towards socializing, you know, movie nights, game nights, things like that, as well as social development. Just this past month, we had an event towards financial aid, financial literacy, and just overall opportunities that are available here at Cal State Fullerton. So we just do our best to aid the process of, you know, just finding those resources, finding those opportunities, while also like, you know, prompting a niche that individuals could feel safe in. So if I'm not mistaken, you are the current president? Yes, I was a current, I am the current president. No. Right <laughs> um, previously, I was a co-president, but I have taken up the role as main president as of the moment. So. I was originally going to ask you about some shoe information, but I'm going to follow up with another anonymous question, the one that we had read. Uh, okay. What keeps you going? Yeah, so that's a very interesting question because I feel like every day there's a new obstacle on the way and every day you need to find that motivation to keep going. I feel like the one thing that keeps it moving for me would have to be my family. Above all things, my family. Every time I feel like it's something tough, every time I feel like there's something I can't do to change the position I'm in, my family is always the reason that pushes me forward, specifically like my parents, my mom, very tough story, you know, immigrant, came to the United States in high school, no English whatsoever, yet she managed to still get her high school degree. My father, you know, continuously working outside in laborious fields. So like every time I feel like my life is harder, um, I just always remember like that they're also going through their own things, but the things they do are to help put me in a position so I wouldn't have to go through their, you know, obstacles, their barriers. So every time I hear that, I just always find the motivation to keep going. As well as um, another individual that really motivates me too would have to be my grandpa. Um, unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago or a year ago. Um, but he would always tell me, el huevón trabaja doble. Mm. You know, like, 
in the sh- like in English, I guess it'll translate to like the lazy man works twice. So in order to like keep moving forward, you need to make sure you have all of the effort you could possibly put forward, and the rest will follow. That's something I always keep to my heart. Yeah, it's it's interesting how our elders become the forefront become our motivation our drive it's kind of like the blueprint you might say you yes, know? Yeah. so I'm happy that you use this as your source I use mine as well I'm very family oriented so I also connect with you on that so that's yeah. power 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 <laughs> <laughs> so after you expressing how you're doing today you sharing insight about you know these questions from our brothers which we welcome every single one of you to chime in and have our interviewees answer now let's talk about what we talked about earlier you know what do you want to tell to the world you know you're a senior right yes so talk to us about that what messages do you want to leave here today yeah i feel like the one thing that's crucial in order to like navigate college would be to reach out to individuals whether it be reaching out for social matters or be reaching out like for help just reaching out in general, taking that initiative is something that is very important in general. Um, I feel like sometimes I'm hesitant to reach out, even now, so as a senior, like I'd be double taking on emails, even just like sending texts. But in reality, like reaching out is something that will help you a lot in, in the long run. You know, so just being able to cap- capitalize on your thoughts, like even if you have a thought, like you want to reach out to your professor, but sometimes you're like, no, I'll just ask them the next day. Why don't you just write the email right now? You know, so it's always important to take that initiative and just lead the charge because you never know what will happen if you don't reach out. Reaching out is important because if you don't speak, no one's going to hear you. Exactly. Close and mouths don't get fed. Exactly. Hey, that was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. Now, we talked about reaching out, stuff of that nature. Talk to us about adapting. You had mentioned something along the lines of adaptation and change. What does that mean to you? Yeah, so I feel like during my time in undergrad, I feel like I went through a lot of changes, um, a lot of body changes, you know, a lot of thought process changes, obviously a lot of educational platform changes. So it's always being able to adapt, adopt and accommodate to the society and to the community that you're embraced into. So like during my first year at college, I was very introverted. I would, you know, I was in the dormitories, but I wouldn't really spend my time there. Or I would spend my time there, but I wouldn't spend my time with the community I was in. Unfortunately, I was shy. You know, I, I didn't take the initiative to reach out to other individuals. So I find myself, you know, just being a little bit more of a closed person. Towards my se- end of my first year, in the second year, that's when I found more initiative to actually move forward and meet people, to have the community. That's where I embraced myself a lot more in, you know, MSI and other organizations. Because I felt like that's where I started finding more purpose, you know, by reaching out simply just by doing that. I was able to open up a couple more doors. And then, unfortunately, you know, COVID happened. We were all aware of that, the pandemic, which is very unfortunate, and it made us all go into a virtual setting. So that's kind of why I sprung up the idea of adaptation, you know, because this past couple of years, we all suffered, or we all had to endure, I should say, a, a major form of change. And that's something a lot of us were prepared for. Um, so it's always important to remind that, remember that change could be imminent. We don't know when change will occur. So to expect it and not to expect it is something that you should always keep in the back of your mind. Change is definitely something that we're always going to encounter. It's how we look at it, honestly. And I'm glad that you're able to share that aspect because I'm pretty sure a lot of people can relate to the idea of being shy. How would you say MSI has pushed you to be more extroverted? Because Brother Ariel, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, He's quite a popular gentleman around here. <laughs> and he is looked up to. Everyone knows of you, whether you're a senior or not. You're very um, admirable. So tell me how MSI comes into play. Yeah, I feel like they provided a lot of opportunities just to speak out and to reach out, to speak your mind. You know, we have the gatherings. We have we previously would have other social events. Um, so just being those opportunities to meet people, to engage and to network those really opened the doors for me being able to reach out you know, and understand that I'm able to communicate my thoughts and there is no, I guess, drastic judgment here. You know, the people are here, they have similar stories to yourself, but if you don't take the time to reach out and listen to them, you'll never be able to read the book. Recently, we had a, we had a workshop with Janelle L. Hyder, of course. <laughs> and the power of networking, ladies and gentlemen, must I say, I was 
amazed by the fact that within our brothers, just think about it in the perspective within your like class or within your course or within your family, just like getting outside and actually having those conversations, but in a professional tone, you build a ginormous network. Remember when we were there and we were talking with each other and we we're like, whoa, this is different. We're so used to being homies, brothers, friends, mm -hmm. that when we took the initiative to be formal, you're like, wow, I could build a network here. I could build a network there. Do you remember? Yeah, I feel like that was an extremely beneficial event. Um, you said it best. Every time I go into the space, I'm not necessarily like career minded. You know, I go into the space, I go to relax. I see a lot of my friends there. I dab them up. We, you know, we talk. But to see them in that light, it really opened my eyes to see how much, you know, they've been able to develop based on the resources they've been able to use. So it was very eye opening. And I'm extremely proud of everyone that I saw there and the ways that they're able to communicate. Yeah, one of them, of course, we have our faculty here, Jeanette, Steve, George, and Dr. Fatoshi. I will never get tired of saying this. I'm very grateful for them, this opportunity, this platform, to be able to have these conversations, to be able to facilitate mental health conversations with someone such as Brother Naji. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, all in all, we're going to talk about what we've been doing recently, which is MSIFC. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that initiative from your part. Yeah, so for those of you who do not know what MSIFC stands for, it stands for Mel Success Initiative Football Club. Um, essentially, it's an intramural soccer team here at Cal State Fullerton that we created. Um, I kind of took the initiative, but of course it was a group effort. We wanted to find an outlet for us to communicate outside of academic walls and what other you know, outlet to do it then with sports. The soccer team started about 2020, the semester, spring 2020. That's when we all just wanted to go find a way to kind of bond, you know. We're always stuck in the bugs. We're always stuck in jobs. So to have that recreational use of like a soccer field and be able to communicate in that way, you know, it's a beautiful thing to see. Even now, two years later, it's expanded so much, Alan. Like we started off with like maybe like nine players barely scratching subs and now we have like a whole like 15 man roster and unfortunately we couldn't even get everybody into it this semester just because of parameters so it's just great to see like even if i don't play just watching you know alan pass the ball to man with see like chemistry there it's like <laughs> uh yeah no i it? i came out of retirement from my brother over here brother <laughs> <laughs> i stopped playing for a cool minute but i gotta say that aspect of leaving the professional or formal setting of academia is so important for our brothers i feel as if you know this idea of brotherhood can go outside of like you said these premises the wall because that's an important aspect to grow on you know yes. school is not just about books it's about networking and also mm -hmm. building friendships so i mean other than that what would you say that it's important for the younger generation to know now that you're you're senior, you're going to be moving forward soon. What, what, what's that lesson that you want to leave them? I'd probably say you should take any opportunity you can. Um, it doesn't even matter if it's a social opportunity, networking opportunity, job opportunity. Just really think about it before you just brush it off. Looking back, um, I feel like I was kind of limited with opportunities just because of the pandemic. So sometimes I always wonder, like, what would have happened if there wasn't a pandemic? And mm. I was able to spend all my four years here at Cal State Fullerton, how different my life would have been. So that, like, part of, like, what if always does play a role in my mind. So just jump at any opportunity you can. Even if you're hesitant about it, the fact that you're hesitant means you're thinking about it. So that's why it's, like, just consider every, you know, thought that comes to your mind, and it might be leading you to something great. Wow. That was good. The idea of if you're hesitant about it, I mean, you're going to do it. Mm, I got to pick up my phone and make some <laughs> phone calls. I'm a little bit hesitant. Um, well, with that being said, this is the man of the hour. I want you guys to be able a virtual round of applause. You know what I'm saying? Ariel, you mean the world to me. And for people who hear this, I'm a very genuine person. So when I say that I live in the present now that I'm 22, about to turn 23, I'm pretty sure we're on the same page of being seniors and all that. I am grateful for this platform, obviously, and also to be able to share a space with the brother. Like, it means the world to be able to be vulnerable, to be able to be genuine, to be able to have deep conversations like this and mm -hmm. feel empowered. You know what I'm saying? So it does mean the world to me. And I hope it means the world for you, meaning move forward, continue growing, be that person that you are. You might be a little bit introverted, a little bit shy, but you got what it takes. I see it. 
everyone else sees it, and we're going to be here to support you. Meaning, whatever I do, whatever you do, we got each other. Yes. That's what's <laughs> up. All right. Well, that concludes today's episode, episode number three with Get Going With MSI featuring... Ariel Alvarez. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see y'all very soon. All right? Bye.